for, uh, for taking the time today to enjoy this uh, Villa Wolf seminar. We have, um, as you know, you all very familiar, we have uh, Ernie Lozen, the, the legend on the line here today, um, as well as uh, Patrick Mullendorf and Claudia from Villa Wolf. Um, so, so, so uh, Ernie, Ernie and uh, Patrick and, and Claudia, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, so it's great to, to have you guys. Uh, well, I have to check this thing here, uh, how to, so that is good, huh? That looks little, great. Yes, so because we have to, uh, so, oh, good. Um, yeah, so, welcome. We're going to oh. talk a little bit about, so you can touch the next thing, links here, yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Villa Wolf, our other estate, which we own here in Germany. And I just try to get the other guys in here into the picture. Uh, uh, yes. And um, look, Villa Wolf is an estate which we purchased, when was it? In 1996. Yeah, here we are. So this is good. Is this... This is good. Oh, is everybody in here? Yeah. Um, Ernie. Yeah. That looks great. Ernie, before we before we jump in, maybe um, you could introduce uh, Patrick and, and Claudia yes. to us. We all okay. are very familiar with you. Yes. You're Patrick here the, to my yeah. right. He is the winemaker at Villa Wolf since 10 years now. Mm -hmm. 10 years now. He's, he, he did an apprenticeship with us in Dr. Lozen. For also 10 years? No, oh, 2005, I started. 2005, yeah. oh, 2005, he started to do an apprenticeship at the Dr. Lozen estate. And then, uh, you know, and then there was this um, um, job as in, in Villa Wolf open. Huh? And so, and then he took over the position as winemaker and he's basically the, the manager and winemaker of the Villa Wolf estate. And Claudia is his girlfriend. She is from Sardinia. She uh, she studied anology too. Um, 2009. Hast du Wein studiert oder was? Also she also did an she did an apprenticeship, you know, um, yeah. as a as winemaker and viticulturist. Yeah. Uh, uh, in in the Pfalz, was it in the Pfalz? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Berkeley in the Pfalz with Berkeley Wolf, with our neighbor, just on the other side is the, the big estate which is called Berkeley Wolf, you know? And they are a couple, and then they yeah. are running the Villa Wolf estate. Um, she is also pretty much a specialist, a specialized in viticulture. Um, you know, we have all these problems nowadays in the vineyards, also in the US, I think, which we call ESCA. You know, a disease where we all yeah. don't really know what happens. Suddenly the wines are dying, you know. Um, nobody really knows if it is a virus or is it a whatever it is, you know. And, but there is a new idea that if you do um, special pruning, which means, which is called, um, oh, what was the translation? Methode. Methode. Uh, yeah, Zürich, no? uh, yeah, but it's, wound, um, it's called soft pruning. Yeah, soft pruning, you know. That you do yeah. as less wounds, you know, as less wounds yeah. as possible, and that doesn't that that doesn't affect them so much because if it is a virus or bacteria which can come in through the wounds, you know, then yeah. you want to keep them as small as possible. And there is a special training, and she specializes in this in this new method of pruning. You know, no she worries. has a degree there. You know, wow. Well. Um... Well, welcome, Patrick and, and Claudia. It's fantastic to, to meet you guys. We, on the line here, we have uh, a number of people who work with Villa Wolf Wines every day. And mm -hmm. so um, it's just a pleasure to, to see some people from the estate. Um, so Ernie, if you could maybe, you, you mentioned that you purchased the, the estate in 96, but I believe it was founded a couple hundred years prior to that. Yes. Is that right? Is this well, yes, it's a much older estate, you know. Uh, I think it's, it was founded 1842 or 46. 
42, I think. 42. Yes, 1842, it was founded. It was barely, um, I mean, a cutoff of the, uh, that was the largest estate in this area. And, um, and then, uh, you know, as it was here, the Code Napoleon, you know, the Napoleon Codex, it was always that everything has been divided through the siblings, you know, through the kids, you know. And that was what happened is that the original Villa Wolf estate, Johann Ludwig Wolf estate, was, was divided, you know, um, because one daughter married the Dr. Berklin, you know. And so the, um, the half of the estate, you know, had been going to the Dr. Berklin Wolf estate, you know, and then the original estate, Basically, the father of Johann Ludwig Wolf gave everything to his daughter, and he had always a dream to build um, of his own estate, you know, in the style, in the northern Italian, north, northern Italian Palladio style, you know. So he was a very rich guy. He sent his architect on his costs for two years to northern Italy to study the architecture, the north Italian Palladio style architecture. So he came back two years later and built him this extremely fancy Italian style villa, you know, Villa Wolf, you know. And so that, that was built 1842, you know. Wow. But historically, the estate is much older because the original estate had been going to the daughter, which is now called, this estate is now called Dr. Berkeley Wolf, you know. Got it. Um... And, you know, uh, as you know, I think, Ernie, we, we, we work with producers in the Rheingau and in many in the Mosul. We work with, uh, with uh, uh, Rheinhessen. Um, yes. Villa Wolf is the only producer that we work with from the Falls. Um, yes. And it's, it's a really unique, I think, region within uh, Germany compared to the other ones. Well, yeah, the Files is, you know, it's, just, um, it's more southern than the Mosul. It's on the Rhine River. It's just on the border of Alsace, you know? So yeah. mainly from us to the Alsatian border is only, I don't know, uh, 60 kilometers? Or so, yeah, so 30 miles, you know, only, you know, to the border of Alsace. And here you see the old map of, of, of the, the map of Germany. You see um, the Files, you know? Yes, um, it's just the border to France, you know, um, and south of the Files, there is Alsace. And so there's a lot of same culture there, you know, architecture is pretty much the same, food is the same, and the grape varieties are the same, you know. You know, Alsace has also Riesling, Pinot Gris, Gewürztraminer, Pinot Blanc, um, Pinot Noir, um, and that is exactly the same grape varieties you find on the German side of the of the of of of, um, of Alsace. If you got, just go north, then you come into the Pfalz. South is Alsace. The extension of the Alsace is the Pfalz. You know the Palatinate is called. You know, it is a quite warm area. It's also called the Tuscany of Germany. You know, because it has a Mediterranean climate. There you find fig trees, almond trees. You know. Yeah, and so Mediterranean climate, you know, very beautiful, very beautiful area. And so beside of Riesling, there's a huge tradition for, for the Pinot varietals, like Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, you know, Pinot, you know. Um, so uh, Silvana was very strong as an historic grape variety in the old days, but nobody is doing Silvana anymore, but in the old days, there was a lot of Silvana. Um, uh, there was also these kind of aromatic grape varieties like the Westramina and Muscatella, you know? It's also not as popular anymore as it used to be in the old days. Um, now you find also a lot of French grape varieties like Sauvignon Blanc, you know? And with the reds, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, um, even Syrah you find there nowadays, you know? Because it's a warm climate, you get everything right. No? And, and Ernie, when we, you you were comparing it a little bit to Alsace, you know, when we talk mm -hmm. about Alsace, the Vosges mountains are a really you know important geographical uh, mm -hmm. picture of Alsace, and they talk about a rain shadow, right, where Alsace actually ends up being one of the driest places. Um, yes, is it there is, a similar extension? It's a little bit similar. The extension yeah. of the Vosges mountains, you know, the Vosges yeah. mountains. 
going into Germany, you know, but there they are called the hard mountains, no? But yeah. the hard mountains, basically the hard mountains are the tail of the Vosges mountains, you know? which is going into yeah. Germany. So the hard mountains are by far not as high anymore as yeah. the Vosges mountains. The, the Vosges mountains are all the way going up to 1,000 meters, no? No, up, up meter. nearly up to 3,000 feet, you know? Um, but the, the hard mountains are not as high. They are rather 2,000 feet maximum. Yeah. No? So this is basically the tail of the Vosges mountains. So we are also, because the weather is all coming from the west, we're also in the rain shadow of the yeah. hard mountains, you know. But nice. I, I would assume that we get a little bit more rain because yeah. because the, the, the Vosges mountains are higher as the hard mountains, you know. So yeah. we get a little bit more rain as the as Alsace, you know. But right. it is an issue sometimes, you know. Rain can be an issue. I see. You know, I also see that the Rhine River um, is is basically it. it Flows up and it's it's the border between uh, Baden and the Falls. Yes. So the Rhine River is the natural border. I mean, uh, well, no, it's not the. Yeah, it's the. It, yeah, it's the. It's it's exactly it's the border between Baden and Falls, but also the border from Baden to Alsace, you know, to France. Yeah. Yes, that's true. But um, but. The Pfalz Palatinate is the largest, the biggest wine growing area, I think, of Germany with 50,000 acres, you know. And again, the major grape varieties there is Riesling, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, and Pinot Noir, you know. And there's a bit of, uh, there's a, I think, uh, in the red side, is Dornfelder? Uh, uh, yes, Dornfelder is still a big issue in Germany and Rheinhessen as in the Pfalz, you know. It is this German grape variety, which makes big, bolded, deep colored wines, you know, uh, yeah. but very charming, you know, not too much tannin. They're big and red, you know, and deep in color, but it has not the tannin structure like Cabernet or so, you know, it's more soft on the tannin structure. So makes the young, the young Dornfelder is very pleasant, you know, very creamy, very, very nice to drink, you know, very charming, you know, doesn't doesn't need be like Cabernet in, uh, first a few years that the tannin structure comes comes mellows out you know so it was a very very popular grape variety 10 15 years ago 15 years ago 20 years ago but it lost a little bit popularity the people are going away from from Dornfelder so they grow more now again more Pinot Noir again and but Pinot Noir is very high end and so and so uh, all a lot of French grape varieties, which have had no traditions in the old days, Cabernet, Merlot, these kind of things, you know. But yeah. but for the you know, say it that way, Dornfelder is a very solid here um, cash and carry supermarket wine, you know. Yeah. It is very popular with you know, it's not too expensive, quite quite cheap, you know, high yield. It's it's popular with say with the average consumer, you know, like. No, you could come. You could compare it with like this this um, white sin fundle in the old days, which was very popular in the U.S. With not with a you know with average consumers, you know. Sure. Um, this this is on this is the Dornfelder here on the German side. Cheap, you know, low end, but you make solid wines. They are. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And so, so Ernie, you talked a little bit about um, the faults in general, as far as its its mm -hmm. terroir. Is there a, specifically where Villa Wolf is? Can you talk a little bit about um, maybe the specific terroir of where Villa Wolf is found in Villa? Well, I mean, you know, the specific terroir of of it is it is the old riverbed. You know, I yeah. mean, it was a gigantic river. It historically, I mean millions of years ago, you know, because yeah. the whole river had been going from the Vosch mountains all the way on the other side to the Black, uh, Black Forest mountains, you know? So, I mean, a river, at least something like uh, 60, 70 miles wide, you know? So what, what the whole valley, the old valley, Bailey, you know, um, is, is Bailey sedimentary soil from the river, river gravel, sand, sandstone, you know, 
this is this is the major soil there because it is really the old the old river sedimentation you know which you have there huh? which is from yeah. sand sandstone um a little limestone. bit what's it limestone all okay. kind of stuff which which the river transports millions of millions of years ago you know and so this is the major major soil you have here spots here where you have more limestone which is more in the south higher elevation you know because that's not sedimentary that is more towards the mountains you know then you have also towards the mountains you have some uh, vineyards which have basalt you know but the major vineyards are in the old riverbed you know it is not steep it is the flat the flat soil you know it's not no you know and that is old river river riverbed soil you know here you see this is as soon you come a little more into the into the mountainside then it is a little bit steeper and here you have then more i mean as i said um, limestone uh, um, basalt these kind of things you know but if you go towards the river where the majority of the vineyards are you know this is a barely, you know, old riverbed soil, you know? So warm soils, because it's sandy. Sandy soils are sand, it's very drained soils, warm soil, you know? Um, so near sandstone, sure, where the, you know, I mean, where the sand comes from, you know? And so this is more or less the type of soil, you know? You know, a little bit uh, sedi Bernie, sedimentary uh, soil, which which came in, or like in Oregon, which came with the Missoula flood. You know, I see. Ernie, uh, uh, Ryan O'Malley, who's a who's a, one of our field managers in Los Angeles, he was yeah. wondering, what is a what is a bigger difference between Mosul and false wine? Is it is it climate or is it soil? Oh, completely different. You know, I mean, first. The river, the, the, the valley is much more narrow, you know. The Mosul, I'm not sure if, 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 if um, Jeff, do, do you have possibly a picture of the Mosul, you know? Um, the valley, the, 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 the Rhine Valley is much more broader, much more wider. As you see, you don't have steep slopes. And it, if it goes to, to, towards the hillsides, you know, it has more gentle slopes, you know, not steep. Because it's a much wider valley, you know, a huge valley, you know. So yeah. the soil is totally different. And the Mosul, it's very narrow valley. And here we have all yeah. slate soil, you know, very stony slate stone soils, you know. Here in the in the in the Rhine River, we have a much broader valley, not steep at all, you know, much more gentle. If it comes to to some some slopes, a very gentle slopes, you know. And you have this kind of sand, sandstone, you know, this kind of soil, which we don't have in the Mosul at all, you know, because the Mosul is I steep. You, you know, well, that is now. Uh, you have a picture of Burncastle where you see, um, uh, then you see more the valley, you know, um, it's steeper, um, and much steeper, much more narrow, and the soil is completely different. And it's a cooler climate, you know, it's much cooler climate. As we um, as and, and the Rhine River is warmer the climate. It was always you can say in in average in the old days you had always um, say in ripeness one per year. You see this is the Mosul. It's much smaller river. You know the the river the Rhine River is much wider and the river valley is wide. It is not narrow. But here the Mosul is steep steep and stony you know and it's all slate stones you know completely different you see, if you compare this if if he goes back to the to the rhine river vineyards which we have a long huge huge uh flat valley where all the vineyards are you know um so uh, ryan ryan you know, ryan was asking also what is the temperature difference um roughly between the mosul and the faults well, in the Falls, it's warmer, you know, it's, 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 uh, I mean, it's not in summer. We're talking about the complete temperature through the whole year, you know, and we are, I mean, because in summer, it's the same heat, you know, but it stays a little bit warmer during the fall, 
we get it, it cools down more and that's all about the fall temperature the grapes don't care how hot it is during the summer summer doesn't i see it's, it's nobody cares about summer it can be as hot as it will be you know if we talk about cool climate we always talk about the fall temperature how much does I the see. temperature drops during the fall that means september october november you know that is important that is about that is all about cool climate not how hot it gets in summer you know in summer there's no ripe grapes as soon the ration starts you know then the yeah. temperature becomes important you know and then if I the if then and then if the temperature falls down more drastically especially during the night time you know then you extend the hang time and the ripeness process you know and that is the problem if you have during the fall during after operation still very warm weather night as day the the ripeness is going too fast you know and that is the and that is a little bit warmer in the files um, as on the mosul the mosul um is a little bit gets a little bit cooler through the through the through the fall you know yeah so that means in average i would say we have half half percent um, um half volume percent um potential alcohol sugar ripeness in average less in the mosul as we have in the fights you know got it so this mm -hmm. warmer this warmer weather is that this, is that why uh, varieties like Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris? Yes, exactly. On Pinot Noir. Noir. Yeah, Pinot Noir. exactly. Works work. very well there, you know? I see. And that, is, that's, that makes it very popular there, you know? Because you have to see it more historically, you know? 30, 40, 50 years ago, you know? It was even, I mean, we always had been looking, we from the Mosul, we had average ripeness, say 30, 40 years ago, we had average ripeness of 9 to 10% potential alcohol you know only nine you know an average wow average average potential sugar ripeness volume percent potential alcohol sugar ripeness was nine percent on the most and the files wow. 30 40 years ago or always had already 10 10.5 that's not high but we thought from the most oh my god these guys already have 10.5 potential alcohol sugar ripeness God, these guys, yeah. bless them, you know? And so yeah. now with global warming, we are rather in the files with 12, 12.5 12 on the Mosul, say with 11, you know, 10.5, 11, you know? So perfect ripeness for dry wine, you know? But still not overripe. That is very important, you know? Still not overripe, you know? We got some, yeah, 12 to 12.5. 12 this is, this is pretty much um, average now in the files. I would say that's perfect for white wine, 12 to 12.5 potential alcohol sugar ripeness, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean- Pinot Noir I think... is a little bit higher, 13, 13%, 13. 13 you know, perfect for Pinot Noir, but not 14, 15 or 16, you know? So perfect ripeness with long hang time, but not too high. That makes the files so attractive for Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc and Pinot Noir. Got it, got it. Yeah, I think that Alsace in the South actually suffers from some very high alcohol levels in certain years. But you know, but there in Alsace, there's also one other problem because they don't, we in Germany, we believe for dry wines, and they're all dry, the Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, uh, Pinot Noir, I mean, sure, they are produced in the dry style. We don't allow botrytis with our white wines, with our dry white wines. And Alsace, why they have 14.5, 15% Gewürztraminer up to 16% potential alcohol, you know, um, um, uh, sugar ripeness is because they leave all the botrytis in there. And the botrytis yeah. are the shriveled grapes. They, yeah. they, they hike up the alcohol, you know. And yeah. we in Germany, we believe that, 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 that dry wines should come from 100% healthy grapes. And if, it is, if you pick only 100% healthy grapes, the sugar ripeness is, with the white is not going more than 12% to 12.5, you know? I if see. you leave the botrytis in there, then no wonder that a lot of Pinot Gris in Alsace is going up to 15 or 14 half, you know? Because the botrytis yeah. hikes up the alcohol. I see. Not, that's not from the healthy grapes. But yeah. we, we don't allow, we take all the botrytis out and, you know, drop it on the floor, you know? We don't I want see. to have botrytis with our, um, with our dry wines, you know? And that's the reason and, um, that, that it is perfect ripeness, 100% healthy fruit, 
perfect, you know. And, and the Pinot Noir, you know, the same, 100% healthy fruit, you know, we don't want to have, I mean, sure, I mean, Botrytis destroys the color anyway, you know. You have to, you have to have 100% healthy fruit with Pinot Noir. Otherwise, if you have a little bit of Botrytis, Botrytis destroys the color because the color comes from the skin, you know. Ernie, can you talk a little bit about uh, Villa Wolf's approach to viticulture? Um, Great well, thing. they, uh, I mean, Claudia and 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 um, Patrick, they they started two years, three years ago. Mm. With, uh, oh no, uh, 2014 we started. Yeah, 2014 started to produce the own vineyards because we have also contracted fruit, you know. But with all our own vineyards, yeah. you know, we are they they started 2014 to grow organically. Um, applied two years ago for certification. Uh, we are now in the progress of um, getting certified. And I think the 2021 22. vintage is 2022. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. 2022, because you need three years for, for certification. Um, 2022 will be then the first certified, certified vineyard. Uh, certified wow. vintage, you know. Right, right. Wow, impressive. So you're so uh, and so. Are all the estate vineyards? They're all going to be converted to yes, uh, because that is the law. That is the law here. You are not allowed to do some vineyards uh, um, organically, and some vineyards you don't do organically. You can get only certification if you produce all your own vineyards. You know. I mean, I can't talk about contracted yeah. fruit, you know. Uh, contract fruit is different, you know. But um, the own vineyards, uh, if you want to be get certified, you have to convert the whole estate, all the vineyards to 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 organic, you know. And, and it is and what is the eco step? What, what is it for that? Um, no, it's it's the EU. It's the EU. The green leaf on the label. It's the EU um, EU certification, you know. I see. And is there, um, with regards to, to viticulture and grape growing, is there any kind of philosophy that you have with regards to, you know, planting density or your approach to, to whatever, you know, canopy management or, or yields? What, what, are you, what is your kind of your thinking uh, when it comes to grape growing? Well, with the Pinot Noir, with our own vineyard, you know, we have a very high-end monopole vineyard, which is uh, which is on limestone. The vineyard is called Wachenheimer Belts, you know. Here it is uh, two two and a half acres, you know, or a little bit more, three acres. Um, very monopole vineyard is called Wachenheimer Belts. Here we planted only Pinot Noir. We planted a lot of different clones, you know, kind of, you know, mix, mix field, you know, um, a lot of French clones, mill rondage clones, you know, uh, ones, you know, which produce a lot of hen and chicks, you know, the little berries, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so, and what he introduced to the, to the Pinot Noir vineyard, um, to our single vineyard, Monopole, he introduced this kind of, um, Lovoa method, you know, but, she's uh, she's but, not not hedging. You take all the shoots, you know, you take them together, and then yeah. you roll them over yeah. over the head, you know. So no I've hedging, seen, you know. Yeah, I've uh, seen that. It's an in, interesting in, interesting method, you know. Yeah, I've seen that in Von Romane before. It's, yes, it's, it's and quite I think remarkable. One of the, and they these both are one of the first who introduced this method. In, 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 in the fights, you know? Yeah. And his experience, he said, you can- brings a lot of acidity. He the, brings a little more acidity, he says. Um, the ripeness is a little bit uh, slowlier. So the, 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 um, the antiviris yeah. uh, becomes not the complete power, mm -hmm. uh, the engine from the soil. So yeah. yeah, and we don't have the cuts, you know? It is a shock, is it right, uh, for the for the plants when you cut in the summer when we have yeah. well, a lot of high temperature and you cut all the leaves. That's uh, yeah, a it's shock. like a shock, you know. If you do hedging, you know, I mean, it's a wound, you know. 
you hedging yeah. and that means that shut down you know um here if you leave it growing first if you leave it growing there's more i mean more i mean growth is going into the growth of the leaves you know and the shoots it slows down the ripening so you have longer hang time and you know with longer hang time you have always more aromatic wine but no and, more sugar and, that is important not and, so much. and you slow down the sugar accumulation because especially with warmer vintages and i think this is the idea also about madame Lavoie, because if you go conventional in burgundy they also hit up now up to 14 half percent you know and i think yeah. what she want to do she want to slow down the ripeness to get lesser ripeness yeah. and then if it get warmer this is a viticulture which where you can slow down the ripeness and reduce the ripeness back to 13.5 instead of 14.5 no with longer hang time which gives more aromatics because as more we always say as longer the hang time as more aroma ripeness you know but yeah the problem is also more sugar ripeness you know but hang time always gives you aroma ripeness even if it is low in ripeness so this is a good method to slow down the sugar ripeness but increase the aroma ripeness you know to get with low lower ripeness higher aroma ripeness um, and then when it comes to whites, is there any particular approach you have with the white varieties? Uh, no, I think with the white varieties, we, um, uh, we, we don't do this kind of rolling over. Um, but with whites, what you're doing with the whites, no? Um, yeah. Uh, we make the, the uh, grape area. Uh, we we um, put the, the leaves away, so oh, yeah. we make what's the shotgun side. Yeah, um, so the, the shadow, the side, the shadow side, you know, uh, they they de leaf a lot. De leaf, no, no, yeah. no, feel flatter yeah. back, no? Yeah. Only on the shadow side, you know? Huh? By the blue oh. and, and during the flowering, you know, mm -hmm. so they take all the leaves during the flowering already away, you know, because then the, the you know, then, then the grapes which are flowering, they are more open, you know. Um, they they take the you know the moisture away you know so they can flower much better you know they go through the flowering much better but only on the shadow side that they don't get sunburn you know if you would do it on the sun side you know they would get so much sunburn so they do it only from the other side where you have the shadow side where the nice sun see. comes. And when when is uh, harvest typically occurring in, uh, oh, in the, the last year, middle uh, of September? Uh, uh. The first Riesling? week, uh, yeah, we think no, maybe we middle of September, but Riesling. Pinot, uh, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, Pinot Blanc, we start first week of September, the last three yeah, years. It's, yeah, it's, mm. yeah, it's a little bit like uh, a week later than Burgundy, you know? <laughs> got it, got it. And then what about, um, what about uh, winemaking? What is your uh, approach to winemaking for, for the whites and for the reds? Um, and, and well, obviously I mean, here here in California, the rosé is is a big part of uh, what we do with Villa Wool. Mm. Well, the rosé, the ro I mean, you know, as I said, we produce Riesling, we produce Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Noir rosé. You know, um, if we uh, say if we just talk about the Pinot Noir because we are just here um, with with our. I mean, standard Pinot Noir, you know, which is only called Villa Wolf Pinot Noir. Uh, we have a Villa Wolf Pinot Noir VA Vineyard, Old Vines, you know, and we have the single Vineyard Grand Cru um, Wachenheimer Belts, you know. Um, here with our standard Pinot Noir, we do, uh, we over barrel the wine, even with this kind of, you know, I mean, it's a very attractive price. What is it, $15, $16 for our Pinot Noir uh, retail? Um, here we have a method that we still over barrel, but we do 50% in French barriques, but old barriques, you know, I mean, used barriques, you know, yes. um, as you see, we have quite a lot of barriques, but it's only old barriques. The idea is here, 50% we produce in the, in the French um, used barriques. Here, it is not about the oak management, it is about micro-oxidation, you know? Because we see if you over-barrel in barriques, you get um, more uh, complexity in the wine. You lose a little bit of aromatics, but you get more complexity, you know? The wine's yeah. coming together, you get the micro-oxidation. So we keep them also 15, 16 months, you know, in the barrique. We over-barrel it for such a price, 
for such a wine kind of entry level of Pinot Noir, that's very unusual that you still over barrel such a wine, you know, for that price and put it in barriques, you know, you could also, you know, you could do ships or whatever, we don't do this. Um, but we do also the other 50%. 50% is produced for over barreled in barriques. But what we learned and what we saw is the other 50%, we keep in stainless steel, no? But over barreled in stainless steel too. And it, you can't believe it, how big the difference is, you know? I know it from Oregon, you know, I mean, a lot of people, they don't over barrel anymore. They're, they're entry level wines, you know, they're Willamette Valley or Oregon Pinot Noir. They keep it just to, to clean it out before the harvest starts, you know? The wine is not ready, you know, for my opinion. Yeah. We see yeah. even if we keep the Pinot Noir 16, 18 months in stainless steel, it's such a huge difference between keeping it only seven, eight months in stainless steel or keeping it 16, 17 months in stainless steel. Mm. The wine gets, keeps the fruit because we don't have micro oxidation, but the wine comes more together. And that is the idea for this wine. We do the 16 months in barrique, 50% of it, you know, here we get more yeah. complexity. The fruit is fading a little bit away, but you get much more complex wines you now. And yeah. then we plant the other 50% of stainless steel in it, which has the complexity, but still the fruit. So we get the yeah. fruit from the stainless steel and we get the complexity from the barriques, you know? And that makes it uh, quite approachable already as a young Pinot Noir. You know, this is nice. the barriques, you know? And nice. then we have the stainless steel. So 50% is in barriques, the other 50% is in stainless steel. But all, both over barrel. The same, I mean, time of, uh, the, the same period of time in barrels as in stainless steel, you know? Great, great. Let me, um, let me ask you a, about a couple other wines. So um, can you talk a little bit about the Pinot Noir Rosé and, yes, hey. and, and the Pinot Gris as well after the Pinot yes. Rosé? Yeah. I mean, you know, what most people don't know, you know, is that Germany is the largest Pinot Gris producer in the world. Everybody thinks it's Italy, no? But by acreage, you know, Germany is the biggest Pinot Gris producer in the world. It's the biggest Pinot Plon producer in the world, you know? And was historically always the second largest Pinot Noir producer in the world. But, you know, since sideways, you know, there was so much um, Pinot Noir had been sticking <laughs> into the ground in the U.S., you know. Four years ago, uh, the U.S. took over Germany as the second largest Pinot Noir producer in the world. But until wow. four years ago, Germany was historically always the second largest Pinot Noir producer in the world, you know. Wow. Took over by the U.S. four years ago. But you see, there's a lot of Pinot Noir grown in Germany. We have a great access to Pinot Noir here in Germany, you know? We have a lot of Pinot Noir plantings in Germany, you know? And that makes it so easy for us to do 100% Pinot Noir Rosé because we get the fruit, we can contract the fruit, we get the fruit, and you know, and then the other thing is we produce, in the old days, the Pinot Noir Rosé or the Rosé was always a side product out of the red wine production, you know? So all the stuff they selected out, which I didn't want to have for the red wine, they turned it into rosé. With us, yeah. it's different. We grow all the vineyards, which we use for the rosé production, you know? This, these vineyards are used or viticulture-wise, you know, done as, for, for, as uh, are treated, that they make rosé. So for example, what is the difference? With, with, if you want to produce a red wine, you know, you want low yield, you want intense color because the color comes from the, from the skin, you know? So low yield, optimum ripeness, optimum tannin ripeness to get the color. But with rosé, the color is not important. Here, we grow a little higher yields, you know? Because here we want still some acidity. We want more fruit, you know? And, you know, and we don't need, as you saw the grapes beforehand, they're not 100% fully um, a color yet, you know, because it yeah. makes no sense, but they give you already fruit, you know, you get enough color, but we don't want to produce and we don't go as high in ripeness, you know, our rosé yeah. is only 11.5, 12% alcohol, you know, uh, we don't want to have with a rosé of the alcohol, like of a big bolded red wine, you know, because right. a rosé is a summer drinking wine, we want to have it lighter, and more refreshing, 
We don't do malolactic fermentation here, you know. So here we have to do more shading, you know. With the Pinot Noir, we do much more exposure to the sun, you know, to get it fully ripe. And so the, the treatment for Pinot Noir, you know, making a rosé in the vineyard is different as how you treat the Pinot Noir for making a red wine, you know. So Ernie, that point, what, Ernie just really quick. So uh, uh, what are you looking for in the glass, right? So with, with well, your rosé. Well, in the glass for the rosé, we look, I mean, we look for kind of a salmon color, you know. So yeah. we don't do, I mean, in Germany, especially with Pinot Noir Rosé, we don't have the tradition in France, you know, if you go to Southern France, you know, and so, you know, the color of, the, of some of the roses are much deeper, you know, but right. we look for this kind of what we call salmon, salmon color, yep. you know, you know, this, this is, because it's a summer drinking wine, we like it more for the lighter, you know, uh, color, you know, we look for an also a crisp acidity, Especially yeah. with the rosé from Pinot Noir, what's very typical is the strawberry aroma, you know? Right. And that is anyway quite unusual, you know? Look, most people, if they grow Pinot Noir, they want to make red wines out of it, you know, because they get so much more money. So you right. don't find really so much 100% Pinot Noir rosé, because most people in the world who grow Pinot Noir, it's such a difficult grape variety, they want to make red wine because they get three times as much money for the right. Pinot Noir red as you get for the Pinot Noir Rosé. But we have so good access here in Germany for Pinot Noir that we can afford to make Pinot Noir Rosé for, as you know, very attractive price, you know? And, I mean, and, what is it, $12 or what, how are you selling it? I mean, no, in the yeah, retail? It, it, it can definitely get down in retail to, yeah, yeah. 11 dollars Yes, and this, is, and, this is, and this is 100% Pinot Noir Rosé. 100% right. Pinot Noir Rosé. It's quite rare to have only a, a Pinot Noir Rosé. You, you know, there's a boom of Rosé, you know? But, right. you know, 100% Pinot Noir Rosé is rather rare, you know? So you're, so in the glass, you're looking for something that's bright, fresh, strawberry aromas, yes. salmon yes. color. And then when you talk about the wine, when you talk about the winemaking, um, it's what is the from the time that you 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 know you harvest the grapes to the time the wine is finished what's the period of time there that's yeah, it's, uh, it's it's basically it's sometimes it's that, that is the only tricky part how long to macerate macerate this on the skin to get it right in color you know and that is right. often every year different huh? mm -hmm. that is sometimes you need Six hours, oh, 12 hours, 12 overnight, hours standing you know, time. overnight, you know, keep yeah. it macerate overnight to get the color. Um, so from that point of view, maceration can be, it depends a little bit on the vintage between six and 12 hours, you know, on the skin. And then we immediately press it. We don't want to do malolactic fermentation. We want the freshness with this wine, you know. Uh, we don't do mallow with, with our rosé, no mallow, you know. So yeah. from that point of view, six to 12 hours maceration on the skin to get the color. Then uh, it is not de-stemmed, though. No, not de-stemmed. No de-stemming. No. Basically, it is then like 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 making white wine. You know. Yeah. yeah. It is the only difference is that six to twelve hours maceration to get the 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 the, the so the the color, and then yeah. no malolactic fermentation. We ferment it in standard steel, cold temperature. What? Uh, Thirteen degrees. Thirteen degrees Celsius. Really cold. Uh, very cold. Very cold. Um, fermentation, but, but that brings the, the freshness. But that brings the freshness and, and the, the fruit, CO2, you know, and, and, the, CO2 and, and a little bit of spritziness, you know, because we think this little bit of spritziness makes it very refreshing as a summer drinking, you know, wine. Got it. So and not too high in alcohol, as I said, eleven point five to twelve. So we don't go Got for it. Pinot Noir red wine production where we're looking for thirteen to thirteen point five. You know, uh, right. here we're looking only for eleven point five, twelve percent. Potential yeah. alcohol, sugar ripeness. So, um, uh, and then just, if you could just take a, just two minutes and kind of huh? just tell us your approach to white wine. We've talked a lot about Pinot Noir and the Rosé, which is really important. What mm -hmm. is it, your approach to white wine? Well, I mean, as I said, for us, the, the files was always, um, say for me, a region. I produced Riesling and the Mosul, but I always loved the Pinot varietals. No? But I didn't want to do the Pinot varietals on the Mosul because we didn't have a tradition here. I always have been looking for something for an area which has a very long-standing 
tradition for Pinot varietals. And the Files, the Rhine River, it is a historical grape variety, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir, is a historical grape variety for the Rhine River. You know? When I found this estate, I said, look, this is, that is great. Now I'm in an area which has a long standing tradition for the Pinot varietals. More than a thousand years, uh, Pinot varietals are grown there. And, and, and with, and a Pinot, the, it, with a Pinot, with a Pinot sorry, sorry to interrupt. Just I was mm -hmm. just was particularly just talking about in the winery, right? Because I think uh, you talked you talked a little bit about the vineyards before, but in the winery, your approach to the whites. Well, I I already told you the the major difference and possibly to Elsa's with us, we don't allow any botrytis with our white wines because the white wines are produced in the dry style. You see, 100% healthy fruit. This is Pinot Gris fruit, because that's the reason it's called Pinot Gris, because it's colored fruit, which, but which doesn't make a red wine. It makes a white wine, because you press them immediately. You want fully ripeness. We're looking for, I mean, potential alcohol sugar ripeness of 12.5. We don't want to hire. 12.5 is a perfect, for me, perfect for Pinot Gris, you know, because then the Pinot Gris can get very fast overripe and take botrytis. Then they get this oily, big, fat, rich, sorry, often alzation style, which we don't like. We want 12.5 potential alcohol, 100% healthy fruit. We, no maceration on the skin, immediately pressing, no de-stemming, you know. Uh, then, um, I mean, overnight, you know, sedimentation, and then off the 100% clean juice into the stainless steel, and then also very cold fermentation to get, you know, our Pinot Gris, it's very, I mean, also different to Italian uh, Pinot Gris. It's much more, I mean, more aromatic, but more fruit driven, you know, very, mm. very straight, you know, very pure, you know, a beautiful acidity still, you know, um, I mean, good complexity, you know, that is what we're looking for our Pinot, Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc, you know, um, it is really, uh, it's, it, I, I think our Pinot Gris is really great, you know. We do too. The the and what about mallow? No mallow. No, we don't. I mean, that is possibly a German thing. We don't like mallow with our white wines. That is, we refuse to have mallow because mallow destroys the whole acidity structure. No, and yeah. you know, and Pinot Gris is already a grape variety which doesn't have much acidity. We don't want to lower the acidity with mallow if there is not much acidity already. You know, yeah. therefore we refuse any mallow with our Pinot Gris because to keep the freshness, because our, our Pinot Gris has a nice freshness to, to it, you know? And it's yeah. not too big, it's, it's refreshing, it's a beautiful wine, you know, a perfect wine to zip and to quaff, you know, sitting perfect. on the veranda, on the uh, patio, you know, out of the ice bucket, you know, that drinks like water this shit. Yeah, <laughs> no, great. Um, so Ernie, what I would like to do with the, our last minutes here is I have some, I have some questions from the yes. audience and I want to, if you could limit the answer to maybe like one minute for each yes. question, because I want to yes. get yes. through them. Uh, yes. If okay. can. So the first question I have is from Germ Germaine uh, Esquivel mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. was asking, are there similar uh, spring frost issues in the faults? as there are in the Mosul? Uh, well, we don't, I mean, to be frank, uh, we have for a long time, we didn't have spring frost anymore, but when was it? Uh, two, three years ago? Two, yes. three years ago, I, at least also on the Mosul, uh, I have 17, 17. There was an issue of spring frost in the Mosul, the first time since the end of the 60s, the mm -hmm. first time since 50 years, you know, 50 years that we had spring frost again. And the Pfalz, it is more the lower elevated vineyards if it comes down to the Rhine, if it, because the cold falls from up to down, you know? So if the, if the vineyards in a, in a kind of a deep sink, you know, then you can have some frost issues. But we don't have this problem as much as you have in Chablis or now in Burgundy. They are, oh my God, they have so many problems now in the last years. Now, it is, I wouldn't say it's still not an issue for us in Germany. I see. Okay. Um, and then uh, I have from Ann Miller, who's uh, one of our great sales reps in Los Angeles. Um, she asked, it, will, the, will the labels in the future uh, state uh, certified organic? Uh, organic? Um, uh, the estate uh, wines, yeah. The estate yes. wines, yes. The estate they wines, will. yes. They will be, I think, be changing, not the label, but the color of the label. 
It might be in the future, as soon as it is certified, we, now we have this white label, you know, but the certified yeah. white finds it's the same label, but will it become gray, you know? It's very, very classy. looks very classy. It'll, it'll make it very easy to, to tell. The to difference. differentiate, yeah. Yeah. Um, Chris Webb, who is a, a huge fan of German wines and is one of our sales reps uh, in Los Angeles as well, he was asking, um, what is Mittelhard Deutsch Weinstrasse and Südlich Weinstrasse? And oh, okay. I, I apologize for my pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. Südliche Weinstrasse. I mean, there is the German wine street, you know, uh, yeah. along the files. The German wine street is going barely from the most northern wine growing villages of the files, Palatinate, all the way through all the villages down to the basically to the Alsatian border. That is called the Wine Street. It is the it is the I don't know the national route like the N ninety six in Burgundy. You know, yeah. this is the national route from the most northern um, village to the most southern village, and that is the I Deutsche see. Weinstraße, the German Wine Street. You know, and you Got have it. then Mittelhart is the middle middle piece. You know, you know. Yeah. Um. You you have they they don't call the northern part. They don't call really northern heart. No. But they call the the, 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 the but the, the southern part they call the southern part of the German wine street. The middle heart is the middle part of the German wine street, you know. Got it. Uh, but there's funny, they don't call the northern part the northern part of the German wine street, you know. I see. I think it's also not as famous the, the wine vineyard in the northern part, you know. I see. I think that Kirk suggested that it's kind of like the route de Grand Cru in, in Burgundy. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So so vine means obviously wine and strasse means street. The street. The road. Yeah. Yes. The national Yeah. The main yeah, the, 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 the route nas, like like the route national in Burgundy. Got it. Got it. And then, um, uh, so David Rep, who is a, a sales representative, you may you may know him. He's a oh, long, we know David. Long, yeah, yeah. He's a big, huge uh, German wine fan. Yes. Um, he asked a question: Why do you no longer refer to this the estate as J. L. Wolf? Um, well, we used to in the old days. We the, the estate is called J. L. Wolf, Johann Ludwig Wolf. You know. Um, we used to be, we used to call it still JL Wolf, you know, until 10 years ago. But what we saw, JL Wolf, you know, the people always said, asked, oh, well, what is JL? What does it mean? And so we thought we got this beautiful Italian style villa, you know, built in the Northern Italian Palladio style. I think it's so much more easier, especially internationally to call the estate Villa Wolf because we have a real Italian villa there, you know, as you saw. And yeah. so it makes it internationally easier, you know, JL Wolf, it's, you know, that was always, you always had to explain. Everybody said, oh, what, 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 what does it mean, JL? Uh, who is this, you know, and whatever, you know? So we changed to Villa Wolf and we see that it makes it so much easier, especially in the international market, to sell it because Villa, everybody knows, understand Villa, you know? Got it, got it. Um, and then I just, this is not a question, but these are just some comments from Thomas Favorite, who is uh, is one of our, our great uh, field managers. Mm -hmm. He said that he just shipped four cases of rosé uh, today. Um, it's drinking really well, even though it's been cold. And he said that he enjoys the wines on the patio um, yes. But he, he also loves the Riesling with sushi, the Pinot mm -hmm. Noir with grilled salmon. And he was asking, do you have any thoughts about food pairings? Well, I would say, I mean, if it comes to Pinot Gris, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Noir, you know, or the white grape varieties, you know, like Riesling, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, which is our major grape varieties, I think they're all produced in the dry style, in the pure style. I would say it is all this kind of European style food, you know? I mean, yeah. I mean, if it is French or, you know, Italy has Pinot Gris and Pinot Bianco too, Pinot Grigio, Pinot Bianco, you know? I mean, it works with all kinds of Italian food, with French food, you know, with traditional German food, you know? Uh, no yeah. problem with fish and everything, you know? The Pinot Noir is definitely, I would say, slightly lighter in style as it is now California or Oregon, you know? 
So from that point of view, I, I totally agree that you can have a German Pinot Noir or this Pinot Noir, which will produce easily with a grilled salmon, you know, or with some grilled fish, you know, works very easy because it's a little bit lighter in style, even that it is 12.5 or 30% alcohol, but in the palate is a little bit lighter and, you know, and um, so, but here, I, I mean, I like anyway, dry reasoning. It doesn't matter if it's from the Mosul or the Files. I like it also with, with Japanese food. And, you know, I just always said uh, with Japanese food, sushi, whatever, or whatever, um, it, is not, it is easier or nicer to have a little bit sweetness with the wine. I tell you, I love, I love dry reasonings with it, you know? Me too. Yeah, I'm uh, a big fan. And, you know, I, I would say that the, the, the 2019 vintage of the Villa Wolf varietal uh, mm -hmm. dry Riesling mm -hmm. is just fantastic. Um, My favorite with the dry Riesling, like Villa Wolf dry Riesling or our estate Riesling, uh, Dr. Lozen dry Riesling is, you know, yeah. pizza with shit loads of salty anchovies on it, you know, that nice. makes you thirsty. <laughs> hey, well, well, and anchovies, you've got Claudia there from Sardinia. Yes. They have a lot of anchovies over there, I would imagine. Yeah, and I, I put, put too much anchovies on my pizza. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, uh, Patrick and, and Ernie and Claudia, thank you so much mm -hmm. for taking the time today. I think we're yes. just about out of time. I don't know if there's any final words that, that you want to say, but um, we really appreciate you uh, choosing Chambers and Chambers in California to represent um, Villa Wolf. And um, mm -hmm. uh, we're just really excited to work with the wines, and we think they're probably one of the best values in our in our whole book. Well, I think that is basically what I want to address. You know, I mean, Germany is mostly famous for Riesling, you know, but it is funny that the people don't know that we are the largest Pinot Blanc producer in the world, Pinot Gris producer in the world. You know, even for Pinot Noir, very famous, it stayed always in Germany. But Germany offers, especially with these grape varieties. I mean, great value, you know, um, and price, you know, great quality for great value and price. I mean, I tell you, this is, I mean, we all know there are great Pinot Grigios in Italy, you know, but if you come to the really, I mean, great Pinot Grigios, if you German or whatever, you know, if you go to Friau, you know, you pay three times as much, you know. Uh, so yeah. price quality wise, I think there's nothing you know, more valuable as these kind of German Pinot Gris, Pinot Blancs, you know, well-made, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bargain, you know. We, we, we agree. Um, um, and again, thank you so much for, I think this was very useful for us. I mm. learned a lot about the faults and, and about Villa Wolf and um, let's continue the conversation. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for inviting us to talk about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, danke schön. Yeah. Grazie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ciao, yeah. Ciao. We will have we will have now some because it's Claudia's birthday, you know, tomorrow morning. So I think we will open now a nice vintage of her birthday. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. oh uh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I at least prepared some bottles. Bur or, or Burgundy, a Bordeaux, and sure, Dr. Lewis. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you much. Take care. Thanks. Ciao, okay. Ciao. Bye, -bye. Bye, bye. Bye bye. Bye.